Good morning once again. Members of the Democratic Alliance will this morning gather in central Pretoria from where they will march to the union buildings for the launch of the party's election manifesto. The document is expected to outline a plan which the party says will rescue South Africa. The DA says it is prepared to host over 15,000 supporters. For more on the DA election manifesto launch, we have a team of our reporters in Pretoria. First, let us start with uh, Kenny Mapanga. As you can see there, we have uh, all three. We have Kenny Mapanga, Natasha Piri, and Nozin Dombi Mia. But I'm going to start with Kenny Mapanga first at uh, Church Square. Kenny, a very good morning to you. What can we expect from the DA's uh, march today? Well, good morning to you, Lebo, and to the viewers at home. Indeed, what you can expect in the next coming hour is that tens of thousands of supporters will be dropped off here at Church Square to embark on that march, or what the DA is terming a historic march, towards union buildings. Now, this is all part of a bid in which they intend to present their plan to rescue South Africa. Now, what is significant about them moving from Church Square to the union buildings is that the governing party currently sits at union buildings and has since the dawn of democracy. Now, this is all part of the DA's plan to unseat the governing party to help us unpack this further. I'm joined by the DA Soli Malazzi here at Church Square ahead of this, what the DA is terming, this historic march to union buildings. Now, this is quite the task, uh, Mr. Malazzi. Thank you so much for joining us this morning ahead of the march. Um, the DA is coming from an electoral loss in 2019 where you lost quite a number of your supporters to other parties. Since since we've arrived uh, to this moment today where there's an opportune moment for opposition parties to grab their stake, um, you are dealing with a changing political landscape. A lot of your members have started off with different parties. Is this a realistic task for the Democratic Alliance ahead of its plan to rescue South Africa today? Yeah, um, thanks very much for the opportunity. Absolutely, as an organization, we feel very confident right now. Um, and you are right, 2019 wasn't uh, a good election for us, you know, but we are motivated by the positive momentum that has happened beyond 2019. Uh, we often don't like comparing national, government, national elections to local elections, but if you compared 2019 to 2011, there was a period of stability, not 2021. Uh, in 2021, there was just a slight consolidation of our support and between 2021 and now there's been various developments there are new parties that have been introduced in the political landscape what makes us different from them is we are an organization with a very solid machinery um, and today for instance will be a positive testament of that machinery we are pulling together 15,000 DA supporters mostly from Gauteng we are not um, passing in external people to come through so we are positive that we will see the positive growth in this election in 2019, I know you like to focus on 2021, but in 20, 2019, that exposed, I guess, the disconnect between what the DA was uh, attempting to become under the theme of One South Africa for All and how that negated um, the loyal conservative supporters of the DA who then turned to other political parties. I'm not sure that in the past coming years that we've seen the DA try to fix things within the organization that you've been able to still attract the uh, black marginalized votes that you seek to attract with some of the controversies that have happened over time how do you reconcile the two i mean i would disagree with you know your diagnosis of the the second part if you look at at our membership i mean even our congress that we had um, last year where our leadership was elected one third of our membership is white south africans one third of our membership is colored south, colored indian south africans and the one third is black south africans that shows you that we are actually the party with the highest representative demographic of what south africa is right and you look at that in terms of the areas where we are making inroads to this election is important for us because it's an opportunity for recovery yeah
right, thank you so much. That was the DA Sali Malati just wrapping up uh, the DA's intentions ahead of this 2024 watershed moment. Now, Lebo, uh, my colleague Nozin Tombi Mia is standing by here um, at the same vicinity with um, a couple of guests as well. Let's uh, cross over to Nozin Tombi now. Over to you. And you're quite right. We are both in Church Square on opposite sides of Church Square. Now, where we're standing uh, uh, at Church Square, I'm going to ask my camera colleague, Sandile Mkunu, to give you a, a view of what we are seeing right now. So what we're seeing right now is uh, just behind me is the place where uh, the DA will be hosting their supporters as they are coming in at the start of the march. And you can see that it hasn't started yet. It's quite empty. There's a lot more security personnel than there are uh, uh, marches themselves. Did you know that the marches are expected to start arriving anytime from 8 o'clock or 8.30. Some of them will be coming on foot. Some of them will be bussed in here. But the only buses that we've seen so far are the buses of the people going about their business, going to work. We've seen quite a number of people going to and from their business and going to work. A lot of people exercising and jogging and being healthy here in Church Square. It seems to be the meeting point of where exercises meet. But we know that that picture is going to change within the next hour uh, level. Um, as we anticipate that uh, the, uh, the marchers themselves will be heading from Church Square, marching all the way up the historic streets of uh, Pretoria towards um, Union buildings where they'll be listening into the DA manifesto. We know that they'll be meeting here. This is ground zero of where the marchers will be meeting. And they will be split in different points. Some will be making their own way here personally, and others will obviously be bussed in. But what I thought was quite interesting was you can actually see the organization here of the DA. And um, I'm just going to ask my camera colleague, Sunday, to just pan here. You'll see it's a row and rows and rows and rows and rows of outside toilets. And it just goes to show you the level of organization that's been put in place here uh, with making sure that not only are there ablution facilities, there's water, there is security as well as emergency services. So in terms of organization, it does look like the stage is set and the DA is ready to host their marches as they start making their way in the next hour or so here on the lawns of Church Square where we're standing just before uh, the march procession itself um, is anticipated to begin. Lebo. Thank you so much there to Ndombi Mbia. Now let's uh, move to the other side of Pretoria where my other colleague Natasha Piri is standing by. Natasha, good morning to you. I believe you have a political analyst with you this morning. Definitely, Lebo. Thank you so much. Indeed, I am coming to you from the Citadel of Power. And this is uh, quite different scenes as we are used to. I mean, we expect those 15,000 or more uh, DA members to actually paint the lawns of the union building uh, blue. And of course, uh, the program is uh, started or is expected to commence at 10 a.m. And uh, the DA leader will then be addressing thousands of these supporters. And of course, like we've heard, uh, the DA saying that they manifesto will be centered around the DA's rescue plan for South Africa and they say that this manifesto will offer solutions uh, to the immediate problems that South Africans face the energy crisis, poverty unemployment, service delivery and so many more but of course uh, Lebo, like you've correctly cited I am joined uh, by a political analyst uh, Dr. Levi Ndo. Dr. Ndo thank you so much for joining us on SABC News I think it's interesting that the DA opted not to go to a stadium like they did in 2019. They opted to come here at the lawns of the union buildings and i mean informally we'll say that you know these are shots fired at the governing party indeed good morning uh, natasha good morning to the viewers at home um i think what the da has decided to do is to play that political psychology mind to say we actually moving towards the union buildings and that is why they have to launch their manifesto right here and quite interesting is that you'll get many other political parties wanting to go to the stadiums, uh, also to play the political psychology game. My sense is that what the DA is doing is to say, 
what is important is the message that you send. Mm. And more importantly is what an individual does on the voting booth. Mm. So um, it depends on how you send the message to the people out there. And I think what the DA is trying to do is to say, we're not interested in the numbers. We're not interested in filling the stadia. We're interested in sending the message that the people are going to be able to receive. And the most crucial moment is this one, that the message that they send out should be received by the people, carry this me uh, message until they go to a vote. I think I like um, what you, you what you talk about. Um, I think these days people always reduce um, filling up of stadiums and also uh, stadium politics, basically. And people uh, think that stadium politics will actually translate to votes, but that's not the case. S filling the stadium has nothing to do with the vote. Mm -hmm. Filling the stadium, as I said earlier on, is political psychology. Mm -hmm. um, what people what people uh, would do is that when they are invited to go to the stadium, they would go. And it does not necessarily mean that when they are there at the stadium, they are going to vote for your party. There are a lot of parties that um, arranged their rallies in the past at the stadiums, and they were surprised when uh, they checked the, the election yeah. results, and they could not even get a representation. And I say this is crunch time because you should be able to have a message that a voter should be able to carry from today until the voting day. But also, you should also be able to send the message that a voter is able to talk about that message and convince others to vote for your party. And what we have, uh, we have seen uh, in many political parties is that campaigns are only left for certain individuals and other members will just relax and sit down and do nothing. And I think it is time that uh, with all political parties, you need to ensure that all members participate in this exercise mm. until uh, they, they also have to convince more people to vote for their parties. Okay. Mr. Ndo, thank you so much for your time. Of course, this isn't the end. We will be engaging with you uh, throughout the course of the day as the SABC gives you rolling coverage of the DA's uh, manifesto under the theme Ready to Rescue South Africa. The main opposition believes that they're actually knocking on the doors of uh, the union buildings that come or oppose the elections. Uh, they will be, uh, of course, uh, the governing party if they manage to unseat um, the governing ANC. And don't forget, uh, the DA is also part of a pre-coalition pact alongside with other 11 political parties. And of course, the whole aim of the multi-party charter, as they say, is to unseat the ANC government, to keep the EFF out of government, and of course, to bring change uh, to the country. Whether or not this will happen, of course, voters uh, need to decide. But of course, later on, uh, John Steenhuisen, the leader of the DA, will be making his commitment and his contract to the people of South Africa. I do implore our SABC viewers to stay tuned as myself, Karima Panga and Nozin Tombi Mia will be giving you rolling coverage. We also will be joined by political uh, editor Mzwandi Lembeje, Sakina Kamwendo and of course Dr. Ranesh who will also be giving you a uh, rolling coverage of this event. Uh, with that said, it's back to you in studio level. Thank you so much there to Natasha Piri. And as she said, we'll give you wall-to-wall -wall coverage, different parts of Pretoria, uh, Nuzin Dombimia at uh, Church Square, as well as Kenny Mapanga. So we'll have uh, that conversation uh, later on at around 8 o'clock. SK will join us at 9 o'clock.